Hi, in this video we're gonna take a look at fogging black and white paper. This is a technique uh, especially used in those parts of the image that are very light, such as this image that I took uh, when shooting straight, straight up to the sky, uh, up to the sun. And in this part of the negative, the density is so high that it's essentially impossible to build any density in the paper. It's coming up as uh, completely bright. But a way to go behind this is that of uh, impressing the paper without any negative, so it's essentially with no contrast. Let's look at how this works step by step in this video. So if we start with a high contrast negative, such as this one of these three, uh, we essentially have three options uh, to print it with an acceptable level of details in both the shadows and the highlights. The first one is the most simple one, and is that of using an extremely low contrast, maybe zero or zero zero. But this will give a very flat or muddy negative. Another possibility would be that of masking the paper, but this would be extremely difficult and time-consuming given the intricate shape of the tree. So uh, we have to resort in this case to fogging. How is fogging done? It's done in two steps typically. In the first step we remove the negative and we shine zero contrast white light to the negative. This can be done to build a flat gray tone to the image overall or uh, selectively, for example, to darken uh, or vignette the edge of the image. In the second step, the image is printed as usual. And since the tonality of the sky is taken care in the fogging stage, we can then print the shadows, and in this case, uh, the intricate texture of the tree, we can print these at a higher contrast level. So both maintaining a good tonality in the sky but also achieving a higher contrast uh, in the mid-tones and in the shadows of the print. Let's go to the darkroom. To create fogging in a controlled way, it is best to start in the darkroom with some testing. To do this, I first cut a test strip and mark every inch or so with a sharpie, and expose the segments at intervals of one second each. To time the exposure, I use a cheap metronome. Given that for fogging only a small amount of light is needed, I typically put this sheet of paper far away from the light. In my case, I simply put the paper on the pavement, which is about twice uh, far away from my darkroom light. I'm only doing contact prints, so I don't have an enlarger, but I have just a light on the ceiling. If I was using an enlarger, I would do this test with a small aperture. Finally, here I am exposing the paper at various intervals. The test strip is developed as usual. These are the results of the test strip. As you can see, for the first two seconds of exposure, essentially nothing happens. This is the first inertia of the paper that needs to overcome a certain threshold of light to become exposed. And then you can see after three and four seconds that a very light gray tone start to develop. So I know now that I want to do a fogging for about three to four seconds. Now that I have an idea about the fogging, it's time to turn the attention to the image. As I anticipated, it's uh, this image of a tree with a very, very dense sky. And after some cleaning, it's time to do some test strip. Typically do four test strip, exposing the same area of the print for different amount of times. And after careful and complete development, uh, I analyze them. So now I know that I want three or four seconds of fogging at low light intensity and about a 12 second main exposure. Since the fogging introduces some light to the image, I typically shorten the exposure time of the main exposure by about one or two seconds. 
especially with more advanced darkroom techniques such as fogging, it's very important to keep notes and keep track of what we're doing. And now finally for some real darkroom action, I am loading a sheet of paper, Ilford Classic Multigrade Fiber Paper, into my contact sheet printer. And it doesn't really matter, the fogging can be done before or after the main exposure. It doesn't change because the total amount of light that hit the paper is the same. So this is the main exposure that happened first. And then I printed several versions of this negative, experimenting with different type of fogging. Uh, in this case, I was simply giving a flat exposure to the whole uh, paper. And in this case, instead, uh, I think it's more interesting. I was essentially burning the edges of the paper, vignetting the paper without having any negative, just by fogging with pure uh, light. And we cannot conclude this darkroom part without looking at one of the images emerging. It's always a nice emotion to see the image come up. And but now let's go to the computer and look at some of the results at some of the scanned images. This is the comparison of three prints that have been given a flat of uniform fogging. Actually, the image on the left has no fogging applied. Uh, the one in the middle has a small amount of fogging and the one on the right heavier. You can see that there is a quite gray sky. I have to say that the one without fogging appears more like an abstract image with this completely textureless and bright white sky. And the images look a little bit more natural with more fogging, but I also think that they are overall darker and they have more of a sort of an oppressive dark mood to them. More like if there is a menacing uh, feeling of this contorted tree. While the image on the left uh, is like a bright sunny day. Another thing that I want to mention and which will actually be the topic of my next video is the importance of fogging uh, when toning images. In fact, in the images on the right, we have some tonality in the sky. And this tonality can be toned, can be given some brown or some blue or whatever kind of color. While the images on the left, which has a completely blank sky, cannot be toned in the highlights, which will remain complete white, complete paper white. But let's now look at what I think is the best result of this quite long printing session. And it's this print uh, with some selective fogging where only the edges of the image has been vignetted and you can see that how the tree is emerging like from the central light the central bright spot while these darkened edges still uh, give a sense of closure or intimacy to this image I'm going to say goodbye and leave you with some uncut clip of uh, darkroom development. See you next time. Thank you.